Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a gap game for you today. Now I know everybody's gonna groan and roll their eyes and sigh at me, but it's been a while since I've done a gap game and I get a ton of gaps submitted to me for replay. So this is by far the most interesting one that I've seen in a long time, so hopefully you'll bear with me through this for the sake of the gap lovers. Now, this is a decently high-ranked one. We've got a spread of 1,200 to 1,600, so hopefully we won't see too much noob stuff other than the map itself. Let's run through the teams real quick, and we'll see how this goes. Michelio is on the left. He is taking the yellow Cybern, followed by Modka Fox, who is Aeon, and Robo Danny taking UEF. And last but certainly not least, K240. He is going to pick up the Aeon in the bottom. On the right-hand side, we've got Supreme Arrogance, he is the top rating at 1600, taking UEF. And we've got Retardo as Cybrin, another Aeon for Baduka, and Seraphim for Dat Lag, though, man. Um, that is all four factions on the left, and everything but Seraphim, or right, my bad, and everything but Seraphim on the left. Getting my directions confused. How lame is that? Can't even look at a computer monitor straight. All right, right off the bat, I see something that you never see in a gap game. There is actually a hunter on the way out through the middle of the gap, and I think that's the first highly aggressive unit I have ever seen in any cast sent to me. I've played in a couple of games where we've had uh, labs pushing across the middle here, and it looks like we do have one of those right here. A mole and hunter pair headed for the gap on that side. But this is the first one I've ever seen head through middle, and it is going to round the bend and head up towards the north side, probably going to try to snag an engineer or three up in this corner. And as is the normal, we have four ACUs in the middle and then the two southern ACUs are coming up, but it looks like Gray is going to beat... Nope, that is not pushing up to middle. Uh, that lag is going to pick up mass extractors. That's what he's pushing his ACU out for. Hit the handy dandy shift key, see what move orders are queued up, and I will actually know what I'm talking about. That is an impressive cluster of manual reclaim orders right there. Not sure how much good that is actually going to do, but hey, I appreciate the effort. And where's that lab? There's that lab. He looped up to get around any incoming ACUs. And then back down, going to snag an engineer right here, and then move towards the back. So that is a good lab trade for an engineer. It was worth it. Got Robo Danny already in the mass. Commander he is dipping into that up to 600 reclaim already, reclaiming as fast as he can possibly go. Baduka has come up to meet him. And he's going to get double teamed right here, but I imagine there's going to be more reclaiming going on than killing if the pass is any indicator. Trading bombers right here. This is an exceptional amount of symmetry right here. We've got bombers and scouts passing each other mid-air, and there's an interceptor very nearly done for Michelio. Hopefully he will be able to deny that bomber, and an interceptor nearly done on the right as well. We'll have to see if either of these actually get off a kill. White's not looking too good. He has a move order directly into the base with an interceptor ready to snag it. One engineer kill for the right side bomber. We've got no bomb drop. The left is dead. And another engineer kill. Two engineer kills and damage to a third, as well as damaging a partially built Tech 1 mass extractor. That's going to cost mass to heal up, so that was a good hit there as well. So good kills on the right. Yellow definitely wins. Michelle Yeo gets the best bomber award, at least in the first part of the game. And the blows have been traded in the middle. All the mass is gone. Everybody's picked up what they can pick up. Let's take a look here. Of course, Zip for Datlags. He wasn't at the front. And ditto for Supreme. And Michelio. These guys, though. K240 picking up 600. Modka with 1K. Retardo with 2K. Looks like uh, Baduka has 1,200. And then Robo Danny with 2,600. Robo Danny has the most roughly even spread of mass. Slight. And I do mean slight advantage to the left-hand side. So that is the early game of Gap. Congrats to everybody. We made it through the first part. And now we get to enjoy the build-up phase. We can basically ramble on about anything we want to do. Because there's not going to be much happening for the next five or six minutes. Other than this in, this uh, bomber that just came across here. And I think killed a single engineer before it died. 
So, we've got two ACUs facing off in the mid here, and Retardo is going to pick up that mass extractor, probably going to retreat and get upgrades on both sides. Already have the T2 upgrade going down for Robo Danny. K240 is going to assist with that. And Modka Fox is going to pull back to base here. He's got a land factory going down. Probably going to get an upgrade back in his own base for safety. And I need to detach my tongue from the roof of my mouth sometimes. I hate it. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this. You have this long, extravagant flow of words coming through your mind. And then when it actually makes it to your tongue, somehow it just gets trapped there. Your tongue doesn't want to let it out. And once you hook your first word, everything else slows down because it's like memory overload for a computer. You hit your buffer limit and you've got to kind of lag everything back and catch it back up again I've got to decrease the sim speed on my speech level they should definitely <laughs> use supreme commander analogies when uh, you're learning in speech class i think that would liven up the discussion a whole lot got a t1 bomber moving across to the right now again for michelio michelio is loving these t1 bombers he's gonna throw as many of them as he possibly can at the enemy team and hey as long as you can pick up two engineers your bomber has paid for itself and you're good to go of course anything past two engineers is a bonus and you want to kill more than two engineers but if you kill at minimum two engineers you pretty much paid for your bomber in mass cost but i'm gonna pick up a t1 radar that is not a bad target at all and going to pick up three engineers so that was an awesome bomber and i forgot to change my mouse settings so i went to click and i got the network stats window the console command console that's what it's called um so i'm gonna have to be very careful with my scroll wheel this game i do use a holy cow look at the patrol orders my goodness I use a Razor Tartarus. I don't know if you guys have seen those. Um, they are a left-handed keypad that I use to sort out all of my hotkeys, and it has a joystick and all this other kind of stuff. And then I have a multi-button mouse. And to control that, I have a piece of software, the Razor's uh, Synapse, that's what it's called. And occasionally the thing glitches out. When I change programs, it doesn't want to recognize the new program. So I'm stuck on Heroes of the Storm hotkeys, and I'm in Supreme Commander, which a couple of them are shared in common, but overall not cool. This is the inaccuracy of the Medusa. You can see that Medusa shot clean missed a T1 mass extractor. It is going to kill it eventually. Definitely want to kill Eco any and all times you are presented with the opportunity, but it is going to take a couple extra shots to kill it because, hey, low AoE and high inaccuracy do not mix well together. It does really well when there's a group of units together. It absolutely plasters groups of Tech 1 and Tech 2 units. Tech 1 because it kills them outright, and Tech 2 because it stuns anything it doesn't kill. But uh, versus single stationary targets, not so great. Another T1 bomber thrown across the mountain pass that is going to kill a T1 radar and two engineers again. So Michelio is making the best use of his bombers that he possibly can. Kudos to you, sir, for mastery of the Tech 1 bomber skill. You can progress to new and brighter things. Looks like uh, Michelio is significantly behind, though, on mass income. Maybe that was a power stall, though. He is sitting on 43, which is roughly equivalent to the other guys. I think that was most likely a power stall that was just messing up the numbers just a little bit. Modka Fox is leading the pack in score. He's got 1.3k power, which is the highest power income, not the highest mass, though. That honor belongs to that lag, though, man. It is sitting at, it was 58, now 252, probably a little blip of reclaim, but even if he isn't the absolute highest, he's tied for it. So K240 and that lag running neck and neck in the eco race which is pretty much the only race that matters in gap i know you thought it was cyber or uef but no those races have nothing to do with it at all it is eco eco is the king of gap and i'm sure you've noticed anybody over about 1200 rank has a dedicated build that they do for gap because it is honestly almost as strict as sentence but it's a little harder to screw up because your mechs are more consolidated so it's harder to stall on anything but there are extremely refined build orders for gap I know you think that it's a new map, and you know it probably is a new map. I personally think that it is, but people who play it all the time do have a certain level of skill in it, and we can all appreciate skill 
at certain types of games. Two bombers. Michelio is upping the ante on this one. He's throwing two Tech 1 bombers at once into the fray. There is a flat cannon, but you know what? Screw you, Flak. I'm going to kill this radar anyway. Another bomber coming in. Oh, it was for the radar. I was so desperately hoping that we would see a quadruple engine kill with that one, but it is just for radar. At this point, cost of Tech 1 bomber. <clears throat> excuse me. The cost of a Tech 1 bomber is negligible. And Intel is a very, very valuable resource. So if you can knock out Intel and free yourself up to move some units around without the enemy knowing what you're doing, although they are air scouting, so that's not entirely feasible, it is always a good thing to do to knock out your opponent's radar. Uh, word to the wise, if you have Tech 2 or higher, I would hide that thing either underneath a shield or back further in the base, especially once you get up to T3. A Omni dies to any T1 bomber in one hit, but it costs quite the significant amount of mass and power to rebuild. So it is something that you want to guard a little bit better. Uh, T1 radars, not so much. They can be thrown everywhere willy-nilly. But uh, once you get up to Tech 2 and Tech 3, do a better job of protecting them, please. Also, it is highly annoying when they get knocked out. So we do actually have a minor annoyance being dropped in the bottom here. Got some Auroras moving in, quickly going to be wiped out by those Strikers, um, and a Lobo or two, but the Strikers have got it. We all know how the Auroras fare once you close the distance. Um, when you get into close quarters with an Aurora, they do not have the health to survive anything, but there's a vetted Aurora, something you don't see very often. It managed to get three kills before it's going to get wiped out, and there it goes. Almost got four, 20 health away, and I clicked console again. My bad, people. T2 Bombers moving in. Luckily, there is Flak, so I don't think they're going to do a whole lot of damage. Another Flak in the back. And fire once more at the T2 power generator, but going to get shot down. So Supreme Arrogance is actually doing a pretty good job of covering his team with air. I know there's not a whole lot of air involved in this game, but for what little there is, I spy a Tech 2 transport. What have we here? This is looking like a drop. That is looking like a heavy ACU upgrade. So I'm thinking that we may be seeing a comm drop here just a moment away. You know, that is my stellar intuition, but I think that anybody could have picked up on that by now. Ah, there goes the T2 power generator. Suicide Corsair is going to dive into the flak again and die horribly. Falling to the ground in flames. We all like explosions. There's a little Michael Bay in all of us. Don't deny it. I know everybody hates on Michael Bay, but let's face it. If you are male, you probably like large explosions, and anytime you see them, you get a kick out of it. And I do believe we have a double comm drop. This is a UEF T3 commander, and that is a Seraphim T3 commander. So that means that hilarity is about to ensue. So, looking at the game right now, before the comm drop, let's take a little moment to evaluate here. We've got Modka Fox popping 95 mass per tick, 92 mass per tick for K240, by far the most solid ecos in here outside of Retardo, but both of them are on the same team, so that is heavy, heavy eco advantage to the left-hand side. And we've also got sky-high power production, 5.5k for both of these guys. That means that they're going to be able to push T3 air to the max, which is the winning strategy on Gap of Rohan nowadays. I know you thought that it was artillery and T4s, but you know, that is just when there's an air stalemate. Air is king up till the stalemate point. So these guys are dropping in right before the ASF are out in large enough numbers to stop them dropping with Stealth, that's going to help you out a lot. Getting that Deceiver in there, that's going to help you out preventing some targeting. I'm going to throw down a T2 shield immediately to get the fire off of their backs. That lag dropping in right next to him. He's going to walk up and probably assist. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what I would do. Maybe he's going to build other stuff. No, he has the Tack Launcher, which is almost going to collide with his air transport there. And I don't know why I said air transport, because that's the only kind of transport there is. And there goes the tax. He's going to start killing off as much eco as he possibly can, as quickly as he can. And you're going to start with the air players because that is the most vital thing. He's going to hit the T3 air factory. You know, that was a good try, but the T3 air factory is a bad target because it refreshes constantly. Units always popping out of the thing. 
and that's going to mean that the engineers are always healing it but, but you know when you have the sustained fire rate of a t3 seraphim acu pushing tac missiles it doesn't matter there goes that t3 factory it is down and out and that means that there is one single strap bomber in the air and kg40 can build more never mind there's about to be more i would imagine he's building asf right now to get the air cover up there's a sam that's gonna knock that strap bomber out down she goes that lag continuing to pummel these bases with tack launchers that was actually a fantastic strategy. I would not myself have thought to target the T3 Air Factory, but you know, that is probably the best thing he could have done. Oh, Modka, you gotta move, bro. Gotta move. And he did not. There he goes. <laughs> Modka is down, I repeat, Modka is down. He took a Ravager to the face, followed by a couple of tack missiles that is going to be a bad end to anybody's day now we got ravagers on michelio michelio is going to have to get out of town or he is going to be in for some hurting second round of ravagers even though there's a single ravager you can see how much damage that thing racks up fortunately he did not take the tack missile to the base that his teammate did he is going to run for the hills quite literally and down goes the air factory I'm beginning to see a repeating theme here. These guys do not like air aggression, and they're going to do everything in their power to stop it. There were some Cerberus turrets up, but, you know, Cerberus turrets really aren't a challenge at all for UEF shielding and a couple of Ravagers. I think that Michelio is about to lose his base in its entirety. We got a Strat Bomber out for K240. One Strat Bomber is not going to be enough, though. He needs to get up a group of five or six and try to knock out a comm in one go or two goes anyway those are some very beefy very healthy commanders also sitting under a seraphim t2 shield those things have a lot of health 13k health a pop 153 regen and if you want the extra numbers you're looking in the lower left hand corner i'm sure you need to pick up the um if you go into options and you check the box for extra details. I cannot remember what exactly it is called. More units statistics, I think, is the name of the box. Check that. And it'll give you regen stats, total health stats, build power, all that cool stuff that you want to know. And before you had to go to the unit base to unit database to find it out, well, now you can get it in-game, in real time. You know my secret in how I know everything about all of the units. Snicker because I actually don't. All right, Tech One Tanks moving in. Baduka finally figured out a spot to ram all of these extra t Tech One units that he had in the back here. He was sitting on them for quite a while because they were kind of useless at the moment, but he was able to stick them right up here into Yellow's base, and uh, they're going to do a little bit of damage, not too terribly much. The bane of the Aurora's existence, otherwise known as the Auto Gun, is sitting right there, quietly plinking away at these Auroras, wiping them from the face of the earth, and encouraging them to never ever ever return looks like k240 is finally building up some strap bombers instead of sending them all in one at a time he's got three so far building a fourth and who knows how many to come honestly it's not looking too good for the left hand team it was looking very good to start off with they pull off a perfect gap build they had high eco high power output they both went T3 air very early in the game, and that should have been game over right then, right there. But Supreme Arrogance and Dat Lag decided that they were having none of that, so they went for the comm drop. And this is what we end up with. Massive devastation happening to two bases and one ACU death already. That is actually looking like a fairly healthy firebase. But the right-hand team still does not have t3 air which could pose a problem because there are a lot of strap bombers over here if i were k240 i would be knocking out eco because if you can kill the eco of both of the players who are building fire bases they don't have mass to build fire bases other than what you let them reclaim and you can slowly but surely close your firm grip of death around their throats and eliminate them if you own the air they can't transport out and hey they have a limited amount of resources to draw from in this situation unless you let them expand Okay, we've got nothing going on over here. No T4s planned, just strictly teching. Ah, there's the T3 Air Factory coming up. Hopefully that will allow them to push some Strat Bomber Denial. We've got five, six Strats online. Modka Fox wants him to snipe. 
I tend to disagree. They're both under shielding and they both have a lot of health, especially that lag because he's picking up veterancy off the attack launches. Coolio, Coolio, but Retardo. He is exposed. He has a monkey lord. I missed it just a second ago. And there goes the power generator, which is going to kill him in one shot. Two strap bombers plus a power generator explosion equals dead ACU. Retardo got <laughs> his nice, shiny, epic monkey lord making the trek to the left hand side to try to wreak some havoc. But you know what? Strap bombers win. In most situations, strap bombers win. So. Sadly, his ACU is taken out of the game. His T4 is down. The Eco is gone. And we got these four Strat Bombers pulling in on Eco Raids on the northern side. This is about to get harrowing for the left side. Well, I say the left side. The right side, who has some members on the left side, for which it is about to get harrowing. Um, the Eco is rapidly disintegrating over here, losing Tech 2 mass extractors left and right, which means that there's not going to be any mass income with which to build Ravagers. He's already down to 45 mass per tick. That lag pulling 80, not that great. Sacrificed a lot of his eco to get that commander over there. Let's just hope that it's enough because right now it is not looking good at all. There's no anti-air over here. There's no established high tech. There is no method for denying these strap bombers other than throwing interceptors at the problem and hoping that the strap bombers fly over flak. K240 is doing a pretty good job over here, slowly but surely wiping out all the remaining Eco Supreme Arrogance down to 12 mass per tick. Pushed out three more Strat Bombers over here, going to hold those back, and again, holy crap, Robo Danny, you need to chill out with the patrol orders. Wait, is that Robo Danny? This may be Baduka. It is not Baduka. And it is not Robo Danny. Who is it? I don't know. And honestly, at the moment, I don't really care. Oh, they went away. Aha, that is the problem. All right, Supreme Arrogance still throwing down Ravagers. Luckily, there's a couple of Sams up here, so it makes life extremely difficult for any Strap Bombers that might venture too far into the area. Still storing up Strap Bombers. Maka Fox yelling, hey, kill his base. And I totally agree. That lag is only pulling 65 mass per take at the moment. Were they to kill his three T2 power generators, four actually, that would be a prime target because that would prevent him from launching any more TAC missiles because when you don't have power, you can't build TACs. That is the perfect denial strategy. But these strats appear to be headed for blue for some strange reason, considering that he has T3 build suite, three SAMs, and a whole bunch of flak. There's not really anything that those strat bombers could do. Why did you not go for... Ah, there we go. <clears throat> there is one going for the mass extractor, not for the power. Always, always, always at this point in the game, you have to go for the power. That is the only way to do this. T1 anti-air shredding that strat bomber. If you are faced with the choice between flak and T1 anti-air for strat bombers, build T1 anti-air because they actually do kill strat bombers faster than flak do, unless there's large groups of strats, in which case flak is A-OK. -okay. If you're dealing with single strats, early strats, like you see on Sentence or any of the larger maps where you have a T3 air rush, your player might get behind and, you know, you don't have ASF online in time and holy crap, what is this? Michelio has decided that his side of the map is no longer habitable and since there's not really any combat units anywhere near Supreme Arrogance's base, hey, we might as well base swap. When was the last time you saw a base swap on Gap of Rohan? That is pretty much unheard of. I don't think I've ever seen it before. So now the right side is on the left and the left side is on the right and everything is topsy-turvy and the world is turning upside down. Let's see what happens. Three Mantis. That is going to be the deciding factor in this game right there. ACU plus three Mantis. And actually, I am being incredibly sarcastic at the moment, but that actually could make a difference because there's only T1 engineers over here. Not any combat units, so if these Mantis can successfully kill off all of the T1 engineers, that's actually a really good thing. That'll mean that uh, Supreme Arrogance can't rebuild his base, and Michelio can pretty much take it over at will without any problem. Throwing down a stealth gen, shield, power, and multiple air uh, land factories, my bad. Should have built flak because here comes the T2 gunships. He's going to pull inside his shield, needs to get that anti-air online as fast as he possibly can, 
in order to prevent his own death. Tech 1 anti-air turrets going down. Yes, they are cheap. Yes, they build fast. But when you have a steady stream of gunships incoming, and I do realize that he doesn't have radar, so he probably doesn't know this is happening. But if you see one gunship, I would assume that there's more coming when you're looking at this situation. Flak would have probably been the better thing to build because the Flak is going to have cumulative higher damage versus groups of gunships, whereas the T1 anti-air has to target single targets at once. It does have higher DPS, but it only does it to one unit at a time. So, while his shield was healthy, he should have thrown down a flak turret. I think it would have ended better for him, but, you know, he's got the high build power. He's got some T1 anti-air online. I think he's going to be okay-ish, but, hello, Mr. Strat Bomber. That's going to kill off one of his anti-air turrets and do a whole lot of damage to his ACU. So, probably about to see Michelio die. He has been in the, uh, he's been in the process of dying for quite some time. But I think he's finally about to actually die. Blue Strat Bomber headed down. He's going to miss completely on that drop. Excellent dodge there. And yellow is going to live. At least for a few moments longer. Got a GC headed over from the right side. And it does belong to the right team, not the left. Because the left is on the right. Yeah, that's sold now. Okay. And there's the console. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Another Strat Bomber joining the party. He is going to lay down some extra damage on Michelio, and two Strat Bombers means twice as hard to dodge, theoretically, not realistically. So Michelio is probably going to die on this next pass, I predict. We got a dodge. There's one successful hit. Where's the other Strat Bomber? Did it die? I thought there were two. Maybe there is only one. I could be terribly and horribly mistaken because you know what? I am sometimes. Two Ravagers laying down damage on that GC. Let's zoom up here and see if we got it. Is that a death? No, it is not. Zoom out while the Strat Bomber is turning. We got Strats from Gray. K240 going to try to kill this GC. You never want to let your GC sit still. Right now, it is strictly absorbing Ravager fire, which is definitely not what you want it to be doing. Here comes the Strat Bomber. Is that it? I think it's it. No. Another successful dodge. Denying all of my fun 71k health on that GC, but it is Killing it did kill rather one of the ravagers and it is going to progress towards the south that could technically get dangerous Momentarily, but there's plenty of strap bombers online. I think k240 can kill it without much problem and there's the death Michelle yo finally going down to that strap bomber It has been harassing him for quite some time and it has finally succeeded in placing the shank directly to the kidney and Michelle yo goes down We've got strap bombers everywhere on this side. Flak is getting eaten by the Ravagers. Still a few of them online. Strap bombers coming in for a pass. Hello, damage 66k down to 35 in one shot. You do not actually want to break your bombers over Flak because when you're turning, the strap bombers are traveling so slowly that they will get broadsided by a full turn of Flak fire. Not the best thing on the face of planet Earth. You can try it against Cyber because Cyber has really, really slow projectile speed on their flak, but I would not try it against Aeon. And 8k health. It is within overcharge reach. You got K240 right here. And 4k health. K240 taking fire. This is going to be a close one. Oh my. And boom goes the. Oh, holy crap. Crap. Oh my goodness. What was that? Like 40 health? He came so close to dying. Wow. That was almost game right there. But the southern team is going to hang on a little bit longer. And I do apologize, guys, for the roughness of my voice. I know sometimes that's not the most pleasant thing on your eardrums. But like I said in the previous couple of casts, I'm having a little bit of issues with, you know, sinus problems and runny nose stemming from allergies. So thank the wonderful pollen content. And there's the strat snipe. Don't have enough health to survive those strats. Thank the awesome pollen levels of South Carolina for the voice that is currently not so much caressing as pushing shards of glass into your eardrums. So all of those strats are now essentially useless. They're going to go poof. And I think we can safely say that that is game. That is all she wrote. Now it is a simple matter of Robo Danny participating in a slow 
and painful killing experience. I am actually going to bump up the speed on this. I don't think there's a whole lot to watch. We will see what ends the game. We will watch it to its completion, but we're going to do it at plus four because you know what? I don't want to waste any of your time that I don't have to on a gap game that you probably didn't want to watch anyway. Kudos to the people who stuck with it all the way through. It did actually have a couple of really cool moments in it. I previewed uh, about the first third of this game right up till the point where I was sure they were going to do a calm drop, and I wanted to experience it with you guys, so I quit it right there and started the replay. I enjoyed the tail end of it, had some cool stuff happen, I hope you enjoyed it as well. And it looks like we got engineers dropping for blue. He is actually going to actively reclaim this base and build even more. Baduka is the only guy who is functional at the moment. Everybody else has either been killed or crippled. So Baduka is sitting comfortably on his 252 mass per tick and slowly eating away at the other team. Um, well, more that lag with his strat bombers, but we do have a donut that is about to be hurled into the face of the player on the other side. So the question is, will the strats get it or will the donut get it? Or is something odd going to happen with the combination of attack missiles and ravagers and mobile artillery or stationary artillery? That is the real question here. Robo Danny is definitely putting up a good fight. He is not ceding control. He has his T3 mobile artillery. He has enough Ravagers online to kind of sort of prevent anything from coming his way. And he's sitting comfortably under his shield, capping off a mass extractor, trying to get his income back up. He does have a lot of engineers, does have a lot of reclaim. Maybe he'll be okay, but you know, I sincerely doubt it because we have, my friends, a donut. Or a bagel, as some people call it. Or a Caesar, or a Czar, or the million other names that have been assigned to it. But... Regardless of what you call it, the fury of a thousand plasma bolts is descending upon the head of your ACU. Will there be the ultimate insult of killing with the control K? I know not, but regardless of what happens now, that ACU is dead. And there it goes. Death by Donut Robo Danny has been defeated. That is going to be the end of this game. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love doing these videos. I wanted to do a quick thank you to the guys who have been watching this. I am just about to tip over 2k subscribers. You guys are amazing. It has been an incredible journey and hopefully my content has improved some. At the beginning I was surprised that even a hundred people would watch these videos and now here we are where videos are consistently getting over a thousand views in a couple of days. Apparently people are enjoying the way things are going so I would love to get your feedback as always. Another quick shout out. I'm sorry about my phone ringing. That's the text reminder. That is the last time it's going to ring. Um, I wanted to mention to you guys, there are so many people that send me replays and a bunch of people that comment. And I know sometimes I don't answer back to comments because I know in some cases there's other people who have already answered or that can give a better answer than I can. And as far as the replays go, I, I hope you guys understand, there are tons and tons of replays that get sent in. And I literally watch every replay that comes in to some degree. Sometimes I'll watch it on plus 10, sometimes I sit down and enjoy it thoroughly for the duration, sometimes they're desynced and I don't make it all the way through it. But when you guys send me a replay, I do see it. And I do love to, love to watch what you're doing and enjoy the plays, but unfortunately, a lot of games aren't really conducive to casting. You got to have a bit of constant action. You got to have interesting things happening. Otherwise, you'll lose people. And on this one, I was able to fill it a little bit. There was enough stuff happening that I felt comfortable casting a gap. But I just hope everyone understands. If I don't cast your game, I enjoyed it. I watched your replay. And I completely understand that it was a great time while you were playing it. But it might not be the most fun thing for everybody else to watch. So just keep that in mind when you're sending in replays or guys that have sent me even four or five or six of them. Just keep sending them in. When you have an exciting game, send it in. Eventually, you'll hit the gold mine and I'll cast it. Or if you're sending them in to Guile, I know you guys know the drill on this one. Um, Guile as well has turned down far more replays than I do. Everybody on the face of planet Earth sends replays to Guile. I don't know how on earth he manages to sift through all of them. The guy must be superhuman. Or, well, he does this partly for a job. But in anyway... Um, all that aside, I do love hearing from you guys. I read all your messages and your comments, even if you're not seeing me answer them. Um, I, I have seen them, and I enjoy interacting with you guys, and I enjoy your game. So just keep that in mind. Thank you 
thank you, thank you for how far this has come, and I hope to grow in the next six months again. Um, maybe we can double it. I would love to. Hopefully with the new content and everything coming in, uh, we'll be able to spread out and reach a larger group of people. All right, last thing that I am going to say. Um, a lot of people do a thank you video for you know milestones on the channel. I'm hitting 2,000 now, and I feel like that's a milestone. I'm going to post a video. Uh, I haven't done a video blog in a long time, and I want to do one just because I want to share some personal stuff about Forge Alliance Forever, about the YouTube community and all that stuff. And it's a very serious note. If you're looking for a game, if you're looking for laughs and a cast, you know, don't go over there. But if you're somebody who watches me all the time, if you're interested in what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, how everything's going, what's been happening in my life, um, go listen to it. I'm going to share, I'm just going to ramble for 15 or 20 minutes and uh, share with you what's going on in my life right now and what is happening. So Maybe I'll see you over there. Maybe I'll see you for the live cast on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern United States time. Do not forget about that. Um, but whenever I do, I will see you then. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.